All right, so our next photo editing challenge and project is trying to fix an overexposed image. And you may remember this image from the HDR tutorial where we merged two different exposures to get detail in the shadows and highlights. This time, we're gonna see if we can fix an overexposed image when you don't have multiple images to create an HDR. And you're also going to discover the challenges that you're going to face when you overexpose an image. Now, for this particular image, I captured both a RAW file and JPEG at the same time in camera, and the results are very different straight out of the camera. So this image here is in your resources folder. And of course, this is the JPEG file since it's already in GIMP. So let's go ahead and take a look at the raw file now in Darttable. Wow, that's a huge difference, wouldn't you agree? So more detail in the shadows and highlights compared to the JPEG file, but it's still overexposed. Now check this out. We're gonna go into Lightroom here to review this raw file there to see what it looks like in Lightroom. So it looks completely different. It looks more overexposed compared to Darktable. And it looks more like the JPEG file actually. And this is more of what I saw at the time of capture with the LCD view on the back of the camera. So if you're transitioning from Lightroom to Darktable, you're not going to be presented with this. Instead, you're going to have this preview of the file. Why is that? Why do they look different? Well, you may remember from a previous tutorial how I mentioned Darktable applies some basic edits after you import, which you can see here in the history panel. Even if I go all the way back to the original, it still looks different than what we saw in Lightroom. And that's because Darktable and Lightroom are rendering the raw file based on how they were programmed. Darktable is showing more of the detail that was captured. Lightroom, on the other hand, is showing the raw, unfiltered rendition of the file. So seeing the detail in Darktable from the start is nice to have, especially for those that haven't mastered reading the histogram yet. Now, I know that detail is in Lightroom as well, because the histogram tells us it's there based on the bars being displayed in each of the different tonal ranges. And if I adjust the highlights all the way down and I drop the exposure down as well, it's closer to what we start with in Darktable. All right, now that we got that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump back into GIMP and figure out how to fix this underexposed JPEG file. And then we'll edit the raw file in Darktable and then we'll compare the two with each other. All right, so for this particular image, the JPEG, I went ahead and did the edit and here's my final edit. And it's much improved over the other, but I think it still has some problems because the image was severely overexposed. So I'm gonna share with you the different steps that I took to get this final image I'm not going to do the complete edit because what I want you to do is to take the knowledge that you're getting and apply it to the image yourself because that's the best way to learn how to do something is applying your knowledge. All right, let's go ahead and get started by duplicating this layer so we can work non-destructively. And we're going to go up to colors and select curves because what I want to do first is I want to darken up the overall image, in particular, the highlights. I want to try and darken up the highlights and the whites as much as possible so I can bring back some detail or at least show some detail in that area. It's going to affect the blacks and the shadows as well. And we're going to lose detail in some parts of the image. That's fine. We're going to fix that in the next step. So I'm going to go ahead and darken this up. I may want to drag the highlights and the whites here and try and darken it up from here. All right. So I think already we've done a pretty good job in restoring the details in this image. Let's go ahead and add a white layer mask now so we can bring back the detail in the shadows. So we're gonna grab our paintbrush tool with the letter P and let's go ahead and drop the opacity down to around 50 or so. And I'm gonna start over on this side and I'm gonna go ahead and begin bringing back the detail in the shadows. So maybe this area here as well. And I may need to go back and make adjustments to this later on. We'll see though. So what I want to do now is I want to increase the opacity just a little bit. And I don't want to use the same opacity brush in all the areas. Otherwise, it's going to be really flat. And then we're going to end up doing more work later on, trying to bring back 
some contrast in the different levels. So I'm going to go a little bit higher again for this cliff. That might be too high. I'm going to undo that with Command or Control plus the letter Z. Actually, I need to go the other way. I'm going to go 25% here. And I want to keep this side a little bit darker because it's on this side of the cliff here and it's not really getting any direct sunlight like this side here. So this side, I may want to go a little bit brighter. And over here, if I want to bring back a little detail in here, I can go ahead and use a higher opacity setting here to try and bring back some detail in there. Let's go all the way to 100%. And we're going to have to do some dodging and burning, I think, to get the detail back in there. All right, so you can continue working on your shadows as needed until you're happy with your final results. So I think that looks pretty good for now. And now we need to do some dodging and burning. So let's go ahead and right click and select new from visible so we can merge all those layers into one. And then we'll do our dodge and burning here. So let's grab our dodge and burn tool with shift plus D. And what I want to do first is I want to burn in the highlights. So I'm going to start off with the midtones, I think, and the exposure right around 30 to 35. And I'm going to go ahead and try and darken up these highlights in this area here. So I may need to go a little bit higher on the exposure or just continue building up with multiple strokes. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. So overall, we are starting to bring out some detail, but I think we're starting to introduce some additional problems. And that is, I think this area is becoming oversaturated based on the amount of burning that we have to do. Let's go ahead and apply some adjustments to the highlights now. Maybe that'll tone it down a little bit. And it looks like it is. Now in this area here, you can see that the results are not that good. So I'm going to go ahead and undo that with Commander Control plus the letter Z a couple times until I can get back into this point. And then I'll go ahead and apply some edits in this area here as well. And that's pretty much it. So that's how I achieved this particular edit with some dodging and burning and the curves adjustment. Overall, it's not bad. If you hold down your Shift key and click here, you will see the before and then the after. Now, personally, I'm not really happy with this particular image because it is too overexposed and you can kind of tell that there's something wrong with it. You may not know what it is exactly when you first look at it, but with a trained eye, you can definitely see that something is off with this particular image. It's kind of flat in the highlights. We could probably go in and make some adjustments to the shadows as well and try and bring back some contrast in that part of the image. But overall, I think there's a problem with it and it's due to the image being overexposed. And this is why I always recommend trying to nail your exposure as close to perfect as possible in camera and shooting in RAW because you're going to notice when we edit the RAW file, you can get back that detail because what your camera is doing when it converts it to JPEG is it's taking the detail and information and it's throwing some of that information out to compress it into a JPEG file. So you're going to lose that detail and you won't be able to get it back like you can with a raw file. Now let's jump into Darktable and take a look at how I would edit this image as a raw file. Now I wouldn't want to start at the original point. I may want to go up a little bit higher to maybe number eight, I think. Number nine makes it too dark in the shadows. So these steps right here, I'm okay with. Now I'm going to go ahead and begin making additional adjustments to try and bring back the detail in the highlights. So for this particular image, if we take a look at the histogram, it's showing that we have detail from the blacks to the whites, but it's still overexposed. And you can see this little line right here. It's kind of being clipped on the right side. See that blue line there? So that's letting you know that there's detail being clipped in the whites. So we need to try and fix that. And what I want to use is the shadows and highlights. So let's go ahead and grab that. And once we turn this on, there will be a huge difference. Boom. All right. So it did kind of fix the shadows a little bit and we have more detail in here and some other areas. But I think the overall image now is flat. So we need to add a little bit of contrast. But first, I want to try and fix the highlights a little bit more above the default setting here of minus 50. So I'm going to go ahead and drag this to the left to see if I can bring back some detail. And definitely, if you take a look at the sky here, you can definitely see that 
some details coming back into there and in this cliff area right here. If I put this back down to around 50, you're gonna notice that the highlights in here are getting darker. The only problem is we're getting this halo effect around the trees and that doesn't look good. So I'm gonna bring the highlights back down until that begins blending in together a little bit better or the transition from dark to light is a little bit less visible. It's more transparent. So right around minus 60 to 65, I think would work pretty good for that. We're also going to make an adjustment to the white point here to the left. And that too is going to fix some of those highlights. So there's the before and the after. So I think this does a much better job than the dodging and burning in GIMP. Although when I'm done editing in Darktable, I will then bring that file into Darktable to do some additional dodging and burning if I think it can benefit from that. All right, so the next thing I would do for this particular image is a tone curve to add some contrast. So we're gonna do a little bit of an S curve here and we're gonna try and retain as much detail as possible in the shadows and the highlights. So I think the more I bring this down, I'm still seeing detail. So I'm gonna continue going until I'm not seeing any detail in, that er in this area in particular. So if I turn on my masking indicator or my clipping indicator, I should say, that will definitely help us out. So I can go ahead and pull this down and I'm starting to lose a little detail in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop right there. Now, if we take a look at these little red overlays, that's where all the highlights are being blown out. Now we do have another indicator to show whether or not parts of the image are overexposed and it's the one right to the left. So this is an overexposure indicator and this is going to be more precise than the clipping indicator, at least when it comes to overexposure. So once you click on that, you're gonna see this red overlay here and it's basically telling you the solid red here is completely overexposed, slightly, and then less overexposed. Now these areas in here, the reds, it looks pretty solid to me. So all of that is being blown out or it's overexposed. So that's a good starting point as well. Before you start editing your image, you may want to turn this on to see where the trouble spots are. All right, so far it's not too bad, but there's some detail missing in this area here and over here that we're not going to be able to bring back, at least not with the editing tools we've used so far. What we could do to bring back this detail in here is to use the clone tool in GIMP to copy the detail from one area into another, which is going to be tedious and hard to try and match the coloring and the lighting to make it look natural and realistic. But before we do anything like that, we still have a couple more things we need to do to fix this image. In particular, the contrast levels are pretty low in the trees, the water, the rocks, and the color as well is kind of flat. So let's go ahead and work on the color first. And I'm gonna turn on this panel right here, Velvia, which is going to boost the color saturation in the image. And the default settings here are pretty minimal. So let's go ahead and increase the strength to kind of tune that up a little bit. And then let's take a look at the before and after. So I think that's much improved. We're starting to get that halo effect again in the sky here. So we'll probably have to go back and make some adjustments to the black and white points the tone curve and possibly the shadows and the highlights in order to fix that halo effect. So if we go back to this tab here, it's going to show you all the edits that you've applied so far. So it'll make it easy to go back and make adjustments to any of the tools that you've already used. And I need to bring back this highlight down back to around minus 50 to fix that halo effect. All right, so the next thing I wanna do is try and work on the contrast. So I'm gonna go into my levels panel here and I'm going to adjust the black point which is going to clip some data in the shadows which I'm okay with because I really don't need to see the detail in this area. So I think that's much improved versus what we had before. I think I want to adjust the white balance now so I'm going to go into the quick access panel here and at the bottom we have our white balance. So I'm going to go ahead and increase the temperature here to make it warmer than what it currently is right now. So there's the before and the after. Actually, I need to bring this down. I think that's too much now. So right about there looks pretty good. All right, so I think we've done just about everything we can do in Darktable. So I'm gonna go ahead and export this file and open it up in GIMP. 
So here's the raw file here. I'm just gonna add it to the JPEG layers here so we can compare the two at this point. So we haven't done any dodging and burning yet on this file that we just imported, but I just wanna do a quick comparison between the JPEG file and the raw file. So we have much more color saturation in the JPEG file, but I think that's too much. It's oversaturated in my opinion. At least that's what I think. You may think differently, but I'm liking the detail in the raw file better. Now, if you want to spend the time on fixing some of these overexposed areas, you can grab your clone tool here with the letter C. It's a little bit too large. And remember, you have to hold down your command or control key to give GIMP a reference point to copy from. And then you can go ahead and copy this in. And you can see that it's not really blending in all that well. So what you're going to need to do is go back with your healing brush to try and blend that in with the area that you're fixing right now. So if I grab my healing brush, I can then paint over this area. Actually, I need to do a reference point for this as well. So command or control, click, and then just gently paint over the edges here to try and get that to blend in a little bit better. So that would be one way of getting some of that detail back. Now, as far as dodging and burning, again, you can do that if you think you can improve the image by trying to bring back some detail in the highlights or darkening up the shadows or bringing out more detail in the shadows, whatever it is you wanna do. So I'm gonna go ahead and increase my brush size here and try and do a couple brush strokes here in the highlights to see if this will improve it. And I think it does. And this time, unlike with the JPEG file, we're not getting that oversaturation as much as we did before. So we may wanna go into the in midtones next to try and darken that up a little bit more. And overall, I'm starting to like this edit better than the JPEG file. So I'll leave that up to you to decide which one you like, but now it's time for you to go ahead and practice on the JPEG and RAW file to complete this project.